Hey, Dr. Amy Rucker here from the Women's CEO Network. I'm on Relationships and Revenue with Mr. John Hewitt. Welcome to the Relationships and Revenue Podcast with John Hewlett. Welcome back, everyone, to the Relationships and Revenue Podcast. I am your ever so humble host, John Hewlin. So glad you decided to join us today, whether that's by listening to us or watching us. So glad you're here. And I have as my special guest, Dr. Amy Rucker. Amy, how are you? I am absolutely wonderful, Mr. John. Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. So glad you decided to join us today. Now, folks, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Amy so that you have a little bit of idea why she's here. And then we're going to dig deeper into that in just a minute. So Amy is a speaker. She's an entrepreneur. She's a relationship coach. She's a digital marketer. She is an author. We're going to talk about her book in just a little bit. And you'll understand why when I tell you the title, she's a pastor, but she holds one more title that my suspicion is that her, that's her number one and that she's a mom. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes. All right. So Amy, do us a favor. Now that we know just teeny tiny, we barely scratched the surface into who you are. Take us back in time. Tell us a little bit more about Amy, a little bit about your story, kind of where you got your start and how you ended up where you are today. Well, when I think about going back, it's so funny because we all have plethora of stories that we can honestly talk about and say and so I guess I'll take the one of the role of a pastor how did I get there um, I was minding my business and I was working in the space of the marketplace I was doing all types of stuff as it relates to mentorship with young girls um, I have a mentor group that's called it was called sister to sister then but it's called girls university now where I teach um, young girls how to live um, at a higher level in life and so I was minding my business in the nonprofit sector and doing all of these different things. And one day I began to have this dream. And it was this dream that I would be preaching. And I heard people saying, preach evangelist, preach. And I was like, what in the world? And so the church that I attended, I kind of went to the pastor and was like, hey, um, I believe that I'm called to preach. Have you guys ever had like an evangelist here? And of course the answer was no. I had been there for years and had never seen women operate in the space of the pulpit. It just was a sacred place that women didn't go. So I already knew that it was going to be a battle. So for two years, I kept having this dream. And this is two years after the conversation with the pastor. He mm. gave me um, qualifications of a pastor. He gave me 24 of them. Mm -hmm. And when he gave them to me, I read them and I was like, okay. And so for two years, I just sat. And it wasn't until I had my daughter that God erupted me, right? And this is what's so crazy about it. Me having a baby in the church space and I had it out of wedlock caused the organization that I was with to strip me of every title. Mm. I was stripped of every position. I could no longer teach Bible study. I could no longer... Um, sing in the adult um the young adult choir and there was a lot of things i had worked my way up to be their regional state director for their conference their convention mm. and so i was over the regions and they stripped me of that too and so what god told me uh, naturally the person what they'll do is run and but god told me this he said if you sit through this i'm going to give you a title that no man can take from you ever again and so story sh long story short um i was helping another friend out while i was still sitting at this church i was helping a friend out and was building their church and one day he decided to throw me some keys and said i'm no i'm not coming back to vegas so i'm giving you the church but it wasn't mr john it wasn't in efforts that i would succeed it was in efforts that i would fail Mm. And seven years later, I'm still standing and God has allowed me to prevail over every opposition, every struggle, every, and I felt every part of it. And so it's nothing like being able to feel the emotions, the physical effect that it has on you, the psychological effect. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing today to say that God is able. Nice. Very <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I definitely want to talk about your book. And by the way, folks, her book is called The Relationship Roadmap, A Guide to Avoiding Relationship Pitfalls. It's an interesting title, Amy. And I say interesting for this reason. 
it's not a title that just the average person would write. So what prompted you to write the book? Because I know there's a story behind that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So after having a series of failed relationships, I got tired of getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. So what I decided to do, Mr. John, was I took a step back and I began to look within. I said, okay, Amy, what's in you that's drawing these type of people that you would have these kind of occurrences? And it wasn't just like little, little relationships. So I'm not going to say, so they were very long lasting. So every mm -hmm. relationship I was in was a few years, but the fact that it was that we never went the distance. Mm -hmm. And so it was infidelity and different things. And I'm like, why do I keep drawing people and their brokenness towards me? There got to be something in me that's broken that mm -hmm. I need to go find out and figure out and fix, right? Okay. And so um, I began to do the work, the hard work, look in the mirror, sort through all types of memories, memories that brought me pain, memories that brought me peace, memories that broke me, but memories that built me. And so I wanted to be that voice to people that don't get it right, but they're tired of getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote it to avoid these things, and this would be the result. And the book is full of nothing but principles. One thing about principles is they can they can transfer in any type of arena, decade after decade, year after year, and they'll mm -hmm. still be relevant. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> well, let's let's dig in there a little bit. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this this roadmap, if you will. Um, you refer to them as principles. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't want you to give the whole book away, but if you could share a couple different principles with us today, I think that would be really insightful for the listeners and viewers. Um, so what would you say are two, two of those principles in there? You're like, Hey, when, not if, when you get my book, you really need to pay attention to these two. What would those be? Okay, so two of them would be, but let me let me say this before we get to the principles. The mm -hmm. book, like you, you mentioned the word roadmap. Mm -hmm. And trust me, when you get it, it looks like a roadmap. I have warning signs, I have stoplights, I have roads in there. There's mm -hmm. all these different types of things that you will see in this book. And it actually, the chapters aren't titled chapters, they're, they're titled destinations. Mm. because we're on a journey. And I, and one thing about destinations is they choose our friends. They choose what we read. They choose where we go. And so when you know the destination, Mr. John, and my destination was to help people win at relationships. When you knew that, you knew that um, what won't get you there. So mm -hmm. to get to the principles, right? A principle in that book would be the first relationship you have to get right is one with God and then one with yourself. Because mm -hmm. if you get those two wrong, you will fail at every other one. And you will, it's a domino effect, mm -hmm. right? I always yes. tell people, you date and marry on the level of your emotional health. And so that's why, and that, and that was something I had to realize, okay, Amy, wait, why are you drawing these people? I had to see, where was I? Where was I in the level of faith, fitness, finance, and my family? And so when I got those four components all where they need to be, mm -hmm. then you can draw people on a higher level. When you become better, you draw better. Okay. Okay. All right. I dig that. Okay. So what, what I think... I really want to know, and I think others would want to know is I get how the book is helpful. I can, I can totally see that, but I want to dig a little deeper into the why, why write the book first of all. And second of all, who did you write it to? Okay. Why write it? I believe that our stories have purpose and their testimonies to help other people mm -hmm. to navigate through errors and things that we have done so they don't have to go through the same thing, right? Oh, yeah. And so the why is simply because God said it needed to be deposited in the earth and that I didn't take you through that pain for no reason. I took you through it for a purpose. 
And that purpose was so that you can have real exchanges when you're talking to people and you're ministering to them and you're talking about relationships because he wanted to be able to give them real results, not from a clinical standpoint because I have a doctorate, not from an educational standpoint because I went to, uh, to, to a prestigious school, but because you've experienced it, you lived through it and you made it out. Because from a doctoral standpoint, I can give you theology of it. But from an experience standpoint, I can give you the pain and every emotion that you would probably go through. Mm. So the why is because somebody else needed it so that they can avoid the same thing, Mr. John. Okay. Now, who did you write it to? So it's written to singles. Um, it's written to couples that may be struggling in their relationship and they need to go back and fix some stuff. I mm. love, we, we do this thing called back to the basics, right? Because if you're already in a marriage and the marriage is falling apart, maybe it's the ingredients that you're putting in it. And if you don't have the information, so the Bible says like this, um, it says that people perish not from the lack of love, not from the lack of all these other things, right? Because we're talking about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's from the lack of information. And so the fact that you don't have the information and the tools that you need you can't put the right ingredients into the relationships, which get called a to fail. So it's written for those that are in marriage already, and it may be falling apart, or you're thinking about getting married, you might be engaged. So it's a, it's a wide range from you can be single, you can be in preparing yourself for a relationship, mm -hmm. you can be engaged, preparing for marriage, and you can be in a marriage that can be falling apart, or it's a healthy marriage and you want to prevent it from falling apart. Okay. So those are the people I wrote it to. Gotcha. Now, would you say that you've had more women than men read the book or vice versa or is it an equal amount? You know what's crazy? Because I know your podcast is for dads. I get so many men that come to me and they're skeptical. And by the time I leave, <laughs> they are thanking me. Oh my gosh, Dr. Amy. Oh my, because it breaks down that I'll, I'll say this, right? One of the things that it says in there is that men and women, sometimes you're not having relationship issues. You're having male and female differences issue because biologically we're created different. And so sometimes what we're thinking we're clashing it in a relationship mm -hmm. is simply because I'm different. And mm -hmm. so so the men absolutely love it because I highlight some secrets of men that if women knew and that if their wives implement it, it'll change the trajectory of the relationship. So it's a healthy sure. balance. So the men that don't, that they come skeptical, they leave like, oh my gosh, yes. And then the women that come, they leave like, oh my gosh, yes, as well. So mm -hmm. it's a healthy balance. I actually got more testimonials from men than I have women. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. You know, it's it's funny, you were talking about um, how are your inspiration for the book um, coming from a place of pain? And... Dr. Amy, my experience has been the most meaningful things in life come out of places of pain. Absolutely. They do. They, they do, do because pain is no respecter of person. It doesn't. Not at all. And we have a responsibility when it comes to the pain, and that is to learn from it. Absolutely. I say responsibility, maybe another way of saying it is we have an opportunity to learn because not everybody does. I mean, I mean, have you ever met, I, I won't pick on women here, I'll say a person. Have you ever met a person who continually makes the same mistake over and over and over again? And since we're talking about relationships, makes the same type of relationship mistake over and over again, and you're wondering, how do you not see this? And the bottom line is, that person hasn't done the gut-wrenching, heart-tearing-apart work that it's going to take to get better for him or herself in order to stop the cycle of that stuff. So one of the principles in the book, right, is it, it, speaking, it alludes to exactly what you're talking about. 
is that if you're not healed, if you're not healthy and you're not whole, you'll contaminate every other relationship over and over again. Sure. It'll be the same results, just a different person. Mm, mm. Oh my gosh, it's so true. All right. I want to I want to take I want to take a bit of a hard left turn and there's and there's a reason I'm doing this because first of all we could talk about this the whole time but there's some other stuff I want to get to. Okay, great. So, yeah, so I want to talk about some of this digital marketing that you do. Okay. Because um I have found it very fascinating. Uh folks, by the way, in the show notes will be all the different ways to get in contact with Dr. Amy. You can go directly to her website, amyrucker.com. And that's where a lot of this stuff is that you can check out. I mean, you can find her book on there. You can find her courses. You can find all kinds of stuff on there. So I'm going to highly recommend that you check out her website. But let's talk a little bit about the, the digital marketing agency that you have. Tell us a little bit more about how that started and what you're doing there. Well, it actually started in 2020 during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through some issues in my relationship that I decided to terminate. And one day I sat on the side of the bed and I just asked God, I said, God, I need something that'll supplement this income that mm -hmm. just has now left my household. And one day I was laying down and a dream came to me and it said that uh, if you get up right now, I'm going to give you supernatural creativity. That's not just going to change the trajectory of your life, but it's going to change the lives of others. And I was like, what? It was three o'clock in the morning. I was like, what? get up. <laughs> I was like, so get up. So I got up, I sat up and I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? He said, go to get on the computer. And he took me to Canva. And I was mm -hmm. like, Canva? I was like, what in the world am I going to do on Canva? And that moment, I kid you not, I was able to create some of the most beautiful workbooks, templates. It just began to flow so naturally. And then the process of a pandemic, I began to help people open up businesses, write books, stuff that they had decided to birth. They had had years of trying to birth this stuff. God, let me do it in weeks and in moments. And in, it has been so crazy. And then within five months, I had tripled the income of the spouse in five months, tripled it by three. Nice. Very <laughs> nice. So from Canva, I began, I t created it into a service-based business. And then I help others do the same thing, whether I'm teaching them how to create graphics and how to use fiber, uh, smart mock-ups, as well as Canva to create beautiful things. And now I have students that are making thousand dollars a day. Some of them making five and $6,000 a month, all because I was able to teach them how to turn Canva something that costs $12 and 95 cents into thousands. Very nice. Very nice. Love that. So <clears throat> when it comes to your agency, what would you say is your specialty? My specialty is really creating just the templates. I sell mm -hmm. tons and tons of templates. Um, it's easy. It's a, it's a safe space for me. So most people, Mr. John, they think, oh, she's just the, the Canva girl. No, it's just a safe place. I don't have to create Canva stuff. I just like to. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a place where that helps other people to give somebody some templates and they could just drag and drop it. Yep. And they can just go and they can show up professional with ease and really build a brand without breaking their bank is so critical. So my specialty would be creating templates that I can design one time and it will create a passive, passive income for years to come. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. So if somebody wants to learn more about that, either on the, Hey, that sounds like something I need, like I need the templates. Okay. Or they're like, I'd like to learn how to do that, how to create them so I can have the passive kind of income that Dr. Amy's talking about. How does somebody figure that out? Or maybe a better question or a better way of asking that is how does somebody connect directly with you to learn how to do that? Listen, I just um, put something in my IG today, um, yesterday okay. about I created a DIY Canva design uh, graphics course. It's an academy. And okay. so there's about 17 videos. It teaches you step by step on how to make graphics. 
and there's a certificate at the end saying now you are this certified Canva graphic designer and you have lifetime access to it. So you can go to my IG bio. You can go on my website. It's there in my store as well. Mm -hmm. And listen, you will not be disappointed. It is the best. And I got it on sale, Mr. John. It's only 50 bucks right now. It's the best $50 you'll ever spend. Nice. Okay, folks, you heard that there. We'll be sure to include a link for that for that in the show notes so that if that's something that interests you, you can definitely check that out. All right. So we talked about your digital marketing agency. Uh, we talked about your book, certainly. We definitely dove into relationships let's talk a little bit about clubhouse because that's how you and i met was on clubhouse um tell us again briefly about your experience on clubhouse what it's meant for you and where you see yourself headed with that platform Wow, such a great question mr john and yes we did meet on clubhouse that's how powerful it is and that's what it's been a game changer because I wouldn't have been able to meet such an amazing man as yourself. Right. And so listen, clubhouse has been a game changer. It is really a God sent app. It's not like any other social media device ever. It's all audio. So I do not have to get this cute. That's one. <laughs> I can sit in my pajamas and just talk. Yes. I don't have to put no you know, make ourselves all pretty. I was just telling Mr. John. It's oh, me to too. So I get it. <laughs> and so it takes but, a lot of work to look this good. I get it. It do, <laughs> and you do look good. Sir. Oh, so, <laughs> but um, it has for me. It has been a game changer. I went on intentionally. Everybody starts from zero, right? So put mm -hmm. everybody on the playing field. Doesn't matter if you're Grant Cardone or you could be some anybody with no following at all you can become an influencer on Clubhouse mm -hmm. and utilizing Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Clubhouse is an incubator. What it does is it drives organic traffic from one tiny app to every other social media platform that you're on. So it's a feeder. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen my IG increase by the thousands just from Clubhouse. Yeah. It's like hundreds a day. And so, um, it's so it's such a game changer. Your investors are there. Um, joint partnerships, opportunities. Mm -hmm. This is how I found you. Speaking engagement opportunities. It's just whatever your goal is for Clubhouse, you can find it there if you're intentional and you're focused. Sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> now, I've done at least one episode on Clubhouse. More, more of an introduction for the listeners and viewers to it. And I will say this about Clubhouse. Don't misunderstand it. It will suck you in and keep you if you let oh it. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> it will. Because uh, it... Okay, they aren't dummies, the people who come up with these social media platforms. They know what they're doing. And so they base it partly on, you know, how the brain works. And I, I don't want to get into the neuroscience of all of it, but partly because I don't know all of that. I know some of it, but I do know it has to do with our, how we create the neural pathways and how dopamine is released and what it takes to get us addicted to a drug. They set these things up to get us addicted to platforms like Clubhouse. Oh my gosh, yes. And folks, I, I promise you, if you get into Clubhouse, the best thing you can do for yourself at first is just to listen. Just listen. Because you're going to discover some things very quickly. You're going to discover there are some people who don't know what in the world they're talking about. And you can learn what to avoid. But then you can also learn that there are some really great people on there. And you can learn some things to emulate. Uh, another thing I would recommend is if you're only going to listen, it's okay to go into the larger rooms where there are thousands of people. But if you want to talk, if you want to have real conversations, get in the smaller rooms. True. Because that's where you're really going to meet people. And that's where you're going to make the connections. Now, I will say you will have an opportunity to be in rooms with 
people that if I said their names right now, you would recognize them. You would totally, I mean, Amy mentioned one just a moment ago, Grant Cordon. He is on a lot. He is on there a ton, but there are other types of, I would refer to him as a business celebrity. That's Mm -hmm. maybe a stretch to call him that, but that's what I'm going to call him. But there are other more Hollywood type celebrities that are on there. And they're doing that more than anything else. They, it's another way to get their brand, which is them, because you are the brand. It's a reference to my podcast that came out this week. My friend Mike Kim has a brand new book called You Are the Brand. Oh, nice. That's, that's what it is. Anyhow, Mike's a good friend, coach of mine. So anyhow, um, but getting on there is well worth your time. Just think of it in terms of it's a different way to network. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Totally different way to network. And just about anything that you could possibly have an interest in, there are clubs and rooms for that. There wasn't back in December, but there is now. Because there's just so many more people. And of course, they just opened it up to Android Android users, which of course is your favorite. Yes. (laughs) But, But you see, folks, Dr. Amy was smart. When she heard about Clubhouse... She got on before Android users were allowed in. So she was already establishing things for herself, getting herself known by many people to help further her brand. Yeah. I mean, it just makes a huge difference. Um, I don't see Amy as often on Clubhouse as I used to. And I think that's partly because she's being more intentional about what she's doing Uh, and the one thing that you'll that you'll learn about clubhouse at least i hope that you all learn is you will get out of it what you put into it if you go there expecting you lose right from the beginning but if you go with the intention of serving of helping other people you've already won you've already won when you do that on Clubhouse, but also in life, in your business, that sort of thing. And listeners, I know you've heard me say that so many times. You're probably tired of hearing me say that, but I don't think I can say it enough. And that is when it comes to your business, selling is serving. It is yeah. serving because when you serve people, they never feel sold to. Have, have you ever bought something, Dr. Amy, where you felt like somebody was trying to sell you something? Oh, have ever buy from that person? No, no, of course not. But when you knew the other person was interested in you, wanted to know about your pain points, wanted to know yeah. what was the problem and how can I help? That's somebody you pay attention to. Now, I happen to take it a step further in the way I do business, and that is for the most part. I know right away if I can help somebody or not. It usually doesn't take me very long to figure it out. If I wanted to, I could take money from people and I could help them. (laughs) For the most part, I could, but I don't do that. And the reason I don't is because I want to do what's in their best interest, not mine. Every time I do that, every time I refer somebody out and say, look, I'm not the right match for you, but I think I know one or two other people who might be. So let me give you their names and their contact information. I will give them a heads up that you're going to be contacting them. And I think those would be great for you. Every single time I do that, the people come back and thank me. Yeah. Because they they realize somebody actually cares about them and cares about their problem and wants to help them and they don't see dollar signs when they see the other person they actually see the person i'm going on a bit of a diatribe so i'm going to get (laughs) off of my soapbox now because somebody else needs the wood so (laughs) no you're doing good i love it all right so we're getting relatively close to wrap up time here but tell everybody how where, how can they can find you beyond your website that we talked about already? What are some other places? Where are you, Amy? I am everywhere. So I have oh, a YouTube channel. Too. 
<laughs> you can subscribe to that. I am on Instagram at uh, I am Amy Rucker. I'm on Facebook, just Amy Rucker. It might be Miss Amy Rucker. I'm on LinkedIn, that's Amy Rucker. And then Twitter is I am Amy Rucker. So absolutely, please look me up in YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel. I think it's Miss Amy Rucker where I'm going to be starting to really build that out. It's not a lot of videos out there right now, but I'm mm -hmm. going to really be focusing on putting a lot of more content out. I have a lot of videos. I just haven't released them yet. And so, of course, mm -hmm. Clubhouse. Follow me on Clubhouse. For sure. Yes, that's a definitely one you can follow, too. That, it's so crazy because you have so many that now we got to add. <laughs> Oh, and then I have TikTok and I'm, I'm barely on there. So I'm oh, yeah. learning to get my TikTok game up. My daughter, she's a little TikTok expert. So she's oh, is she? teaching me. Oh, she knows how to <laughs> stop the videos, add the effects, be in different weeks. So she is really mastered and I'm actually really proud of her because I told her now mommy can hire you to be my TikTok agent and you can do my videos. So she's posts my videos for me, not me. For sure. <laughs> oh, totally. Oh, I get that for sure. Getting your kids involved in your business. Oh my gosh. It's huge. Critical. It's so huge. Um, oh man, I could. We could talk about this. Episode episode talking about that. That. I was just going to say that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> it is for sure. For sure. So Amy, let me ask you this as kind of a wrap up before we get to our final four. If there's one thing you could say to those who are listening or watching right now of uh, one piece of advice, one word of encouragement you could offer, what would that be? Listen, because we talked majority about relationships, I'll give you this. There's four things that no person can give you. That's identity, that's purpose, that's acceptance, and that's security. You've already been given those things. And so it's up to you to just know you're not your house, you're not your car, you're not your job. You're not your bank account. And I think, Mr. John, what happens is when we attach our stuff to items, when we lose those items, we lose us. And yep. your identity is not wrapped in that. You are valuable. You have purpose. And you've been given a gift. And this world needs it. And it's time for you to release that gift in you. Because the richest place right now is not Ritz-Carlton. It's not Wells Fargo and Bank of America. It's not all these islands. It's the graveyard. Because most people die with what they've been given to deposit in this earth, never mm. being released it. So yep. today I challenge you to go forth, spring forth, and even in failure, fail forth. Like you just said, as you said it mm. earlier, don't just go through the pain without taking the lesson. If you take nothing else, take the lesson because the lesson is what can teach somebody else. And the lesson is also tied to income. Mm. Love that. Love that. All right. Now we're going to get into our final four. It's four quick questions. Just tell me the first thing that pops in your head. Are you ready? All right. Yes. Okay. First question is, why did God create Amy? Because he had a purpose for me in the earth and I was a problem that needed to be solved. It was a problem and I was the solution for that problem. Okay. All right. <laughs> question number two, what are you doing, reading, or listening to right now that's helping you grow? So I have um, three ways, three types of books I listen, uh, I read, and then there's, I have a virtual mentor and just a physical mentor. So my virtual mentor is none other than the deceased Dr. Miles Monroe. Every day I listen and download mm. his information. Um, uh, my physical mentor is going to be, uh, his name is Richie Simmer Simmons. He's in, located in Las Vegas, Nevada. I spend a week at his desk every week. I send uh, like an hour or two at his desk. And mm. then as it relates to reading, it's always the Bible because I need the book of life. Then it's a personal growth and development book because I need my personal growth and development affected. Mm -hmm. And then the last book is a book of whatever area I'm focusing on at that time. So if it's marketing, it's a marketing book. If it's business, like I just finished reading Grant Cardone's book, The Closer, because okay. I need to know how to close out deals. And the funny thing is a deal don't always mean a business deal. Like a, it can also be me being a pastor where I need to win souls to Christ. So I need to know how to close in that area okay. as well, right? And so um, that's how I do that. I hope that helps. It, helps. it does. It does. All right. Now, this is a two-part question. The next one, you'll understand why it's two parts. Okay. What do you do for fun? And what do you do for fun with your daughter? Yay! 
So me, fun. I love movies. I love going to the movies. I've been okay. to the movies um, every week this month, and I normally go at least two times a week. So I love wow. the movies, and that's what I do for fun um, because I don't watch TV. Okay. Yeah, so because I don't watch TV, I go to the <clears> movies to at least a week, one time a week or two times a week, and whatever's out, I watch that. And with my daughter, oh, everything. Um, because I'm very intentional, because like you said, spend a lot of time on Clubhouse, building legacy, building businesses. I carve out intentional time for her. She gets to choose anything she wants to do for the weekend, and I take her to do that. But I love to give her those experiences so that it can increase her mindset capacity, her language, and her exposure to different opportunities. So we might go to the museum. We might go race car driving. We might. She wants to go to the water park today. Oh, wow. Yeah, pray for me. Look, oh, no. <laughs> pray for me. Be out there cute. But yeah, so she gets to choose what she wants to do. Okay, great. And this is our last question. Yay. What are you most grateful for? Being in my right mind. Okay. Um, now you're going to have to flesh that out for us. What does that mean? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. So just in 21 alone in the last month, we lost three family members. Oh. Sorry to hear that. Two aunts and an uncle. Mm -hmm. And so to leave, to lose people that's so um, immediate family, it's not like ex mm -hmm. extended family from far, far away. These are people that's up close and personal in my life. They're like my mom's sister and people like that. And so mm -hmm. then going through a, a, a disconnect from a relationship that I was in for seven, seven years yeah. um, to walk away from church as I knew it, um, close because I closed my actual church building and now we just do virtual right wow. so everything that was familiar and losing those people that started with you and they're no longer there mm -hmm. and so to be in a sane mindset and to still have the resilience and the tenacity and the audacity to live through it is just been so amazing to know that it has not been in my own strength it has been nothing but the grace of God okay did I leave with the emotional thing? I don't want to. <laughs> that was good. It was good. I like that. I like that. Okay. So, because that, that was a, a unique response. I had not heard to be in my right mind. So, okay. Yeah. Well, there's things, Mr. John, and I know we're closing in life that it can take people out. And it actually was mm -hmm. designed to take you out. Oh, yeah. But when you can live through it, when you have the, the just the resilience to get back up when life knock you down, not everybody get back up and I don't drink smoke and I'm not, and I harbor bitterness and unforgiveness. That's, that's what I mean by being in your right mind where you're still dishing out love and you're still serving people and you're not just taking from people because you feel victimized to, to walk in total triumph and walk in and in a victorious mindset. It's nothing like it. So I hope that added. <laughs> it does. It helps a lot. Oh Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Dr. Amy, thank you so much for your time today. <clears throat> I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate the information you shared with us, but more than that, what was behind the information is the heart. And that's, that really came through a lot. And so I thank you so much for your time. Thank uh, you for having me. Oh, you bet. And I, listeners and viewers out there, I really hope you take to heart the things that Dr. Amy shared because they'll change your life. They'll change your life if you let them. Now, I'm saving this till the end. So obviously you had to have listened or watched this all the way to the end to get to this. So here it is. When I have a guest on, and if you've been with me from the beginning, you already know what I'm getting ready to say. But here it is. When I have a guest on who happens to be an author, I offer this. The first person who, with their handy dandy phone, when you are listening to this particular episode, screenshot it, post it on Instagram. You have to tag Dr. Amy and me both. If you tag both of us, first person to do that will get a personally signed copy of her book on my dime. I will pay for it. You can get your information to Dr. Amy. She will get it sent to you so we can make that happen. But the first person to do that is going to get a signed copy from her. Does that sound all right to you, Dr. Amy? Absolutely. Oh, that's so nice of you. Oh, yeah. That's something I like to do because I, I want to encourage people to read. I think 
if you want to grow as a person, let alone if you consider yourself a leader of any kind, you have to be reading. You have to be reading to expand your mind about what the possibilities are. Um, creating those new neural pathways. Oh, okay. I need to, again, <laughs> I need to slow down because I could really go off on that. Come program. on, we're going to have to do the CEO library. That's we're right. Exactly. We may have to reading. talk about that. Creating that library. Absolutely. So I highly encourage you, even if you're not the first person who tags us on that post, that's totally fine. You guys still need to get a copy of her book. You can find it on Amazon, but you can also access it through her website. So connect with Dr. Amy. We'll make sure we get that book to you. No problem. Can I do one even better too, Mr. John, if you don't oh, mind? Oh, please. Yay. So listen, the, the person that shares this video and let us know that you shared it. I don't know how that works, right? Whenever you view this and you mm -hmm. share it, but if you screenshot it, like he said, send it to my inbox and put Mr. John, not only will I give you the free digital version, I'll also throw in uh, my relationship planner that actually goes with the relationship roadmap. Oh, and wow. it is impeccable. It has all types of, when I say it has activities that I'm sure the average person do not think about our love, um, our, our love soundtrack, our, um, our rules of fighting, our three words for the year that's going to be made manifest in our relationship, relationship goals, trigger points. I even have sheets for what's your spouse's or your mate's triggers. It has mm -hmm. some stuff in there, Mr. John, that I, I know the average person do not think about. And yeah. so um, I would throw that in there as well for you. Oh, that's so generous. Thank you, Dr. Amy. <laughs> really appreciate that. Really do. Thank you. All right. Well, listen. That means you guys have no excuse now, no excuse to be the first one to get it, to get them, because there's multiple things for you. So please do that. Uh, one last thing I'm going to ask from you, whatever platform you listen to this particular podcast on, whether you're listening or viewing it, ratings or reviews are the lifeblood of every single podcast. So please, please, please send those reviews in there, send those ratings in there. They're really, really important. Um, not really going to get into why they're important, but they are. Um, when you're searching by topic, it helps bring us toward the top of the search. And that's where you want to be. Whatever the topic happens to be, if your podcast is related to that, you want it to be at the top. So if you could do that as a huge favor to me, I would be very much appreciative of that. Um, and I can find very creative ways to show my appreciation. So let me know that you've done that and I'll figure out ways to do that. So, all right. Well, again, we're going to wrap up now. Again, Dr. Amy, thank you so much for your time. Truly appreciate that. Listeners, viewers, thank you for your time because I know that is not a renewable resource. That is something you've chosen to invest today. And I am thankful that you've chosen to spend a little bit of your time with me and with Dr. Amy. And so on that note, I'll wrap up. So thanks very much for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click on that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every single time a new video comes out.